Um, okay, at this stage I've taken the uh, speaker uh, bracket and assembly off. That does give a lot better access, so I've given it a good clean up inside. Um, this uh, valve or tube here I think is definitely too big for the original design. It's sort of uh, jammed up against the front panel, it's jammed up against all the wiring down here. So I think that the original design of this must have been for the smaller metal enclosure uh, 25L6. So uh, we'll have to see about that as we go on. So I've uh, ohmed up as much as I can here. Um, and so uh, the field coil, the coil measures just under 3K. Primary here measures on the output transformer about 290 ohms, and the secondary, well, it's connected to the actual speaker coil, so it's measuring just about an ohm and a half. So I'm gonna have to lift one end of it just to see. Um, but at least there's no open circuits anywhere, and uh, nothing seems to be shorted to uh, chassis. So um, I'm gonna get all these valves out of here and put them away and test them. Uh, and the odd one out, it seems, is this guy over here, the uh, the 6E8. The rest of them are look pretty common, but this uh, 6E8 seems to be a peculiarly European and French uh, device. So, uh, and there's nothing in my valve tester about how I can test it, so I'll just have to hope for the best on that one. Although I have seen some online. Um, okay, so... Uh, Yep, let's get those valves out of there. Right, here's the full set. Um, there's no markings whatsoever on this, but by default it's the 25L6, so I just marked it. Um, and as I said, the 68 is the, uh, the odd one. I have looked up some documentation, and I think I've actually found the, uh, a master list of reference designs uh, from which this is taken. This is exactly this valve complement and so on. And it has a discussion about the benefits and the advantages and disadvantages of the design. Um, right, I'll uh, get all these guys, or at least four out of the five, tested on the old tester as soon as I can. The other thing I'm going to do is um, take um, plan and elevation photographs um, so that I can um, print them up and use them as references. So I can mark, you know, what all the valves are, what, what each of the cans are, etc, etc, and uh, may help uh, future folks who have to uh, restore one of these. So as you can see, at least from the top now, it's reasonably clean. So I can work on it from here. Um, slight indications of rust on some of the veins here. So I'll have to check those for shorts later on. So I guess time to uh, go messing around on the underneath side, which is going to be the real fun part. Um, having asked around on various forums, I think the consensus on the resistive power cord is basically don't rely on it, get rid of it, and um, instead of resistive droppers, uh, use capacitive droppers. So uh, I think that's the strategy um, going forward. Um, Incidentally, I'm not sure, but I think these two caps are new, um, not original. I might be wrong, but when I went messing around, this one literally fell out. It just fell off at that end, and then when I went to put it back, it fell off at this end. So, not soldered very well, that's for sure. Um, we shall see as we try and make sense of the circuit diagram. Yeah, this one's going to be fun to work on. So this uh, capacitor was sitting here between this terminal and the chassis. And it was uh, underneath that uh, resistor lead. So I thought I'll just snip it out so I can check the value and whatever else. When I snipped it out, find under here, I don't know if you can see this. There's a little stub of wire sticking up there that's not going to anything. So, uh... That might be from before, previous repair, or what? Anyway, we keep on going. 
Um, just to give you an idea of the fun of recapping this thing, everything is so tightly squashed in that there's basically multiple layers of capacitors. So to get at this one, right down on the bottom, to change it, these two caps are on top of it, and this cap is on top of those two. So luckily, most of these caps have one end connected to chassis. And so what I've done is I've snipped them all where they connect to chassis uh, until I get this one replaced. And then when I put the back, I don't have to worry about where does the other end of these flying caps go, because I know they all, the other end all goes to chassis. So that's the theory. Um, we'll find out much later on um, whether or not it works. Uh, and these for sure, this and its colleagues seem to be after uh, a subsequent uh, repair, because they're 50 microfarad electrolytics, and certainly according to my drawing, there are no... 50 microfarad electrolytics in this thing, only 100 microfarads, so um, I'll be popping them out and replacing them accordingly. What fun! Uh, more learning as I go. Uh, this resistive um, power cord, I didn't realize that even though at, at the uh, plug end, yeah, there are only two pins coming out the other end, there are actually three wires. Um, and so I definitely am going to, when I take this out of here, going to have to open it up and have a look so I understand better. But uh, it does make sense because uh, according to the uh, diagram, you have one wire going straight out here to the um, plate center rectifier. You have the other side heading off to the on-off switch. And then you have a third one coming off here into the start of the heater chain. Um, so yeah, took me a while to get the brain in gear, um, but I, I think I'm starting to get more comfortable with it. Um, right, at this stage I recapped most of the uh, uh, decouplers and thing, everything that was 0 0.1 microfarad. Um, so there's still a bunch of uh, Smaller ones to be replaced here, and there's one right around the back. You may not be able to see it, but there it is. There's one right there, and that's going to be fun. There's another one there, there's another one there. Um, um, <clears throat> one other little piece of, if you like, light that has dawned is um, why there was 50 microfarad caps in here for the electrolytics uh, on the drawing um, barely says 100 100 and 100 um, what was in there was these uh, 50 microfarad at 165 or 150 volts um, <clears throat> of course uh, if I look at a 50 microfarad 450 volt it's about the same size and so if I wanted to do a hundred I don't have a hundred uh, on in stock so I'd have to get some but if I tried to put two of these in parallel it's just not going to work because there's no room in here to put two of those things and another one needs to come up here in this place area here so it's not going to work either so a little bit of online research and see if I can find a hundred cap at a suitable voltage um, that I could use for that that would be closer to the diagram and yet will physically fit. So um, there's a few other little uh, exotic looking caps in here and I'm not quite sure what these guys are yet so I'll have to go and check them out. And there is the uh, the uh, between the uh, live and chassis caps. I'll have to put a Y cap, Y rated uh, cap on there, and do that too. Uh, and of course, remove the whole uh, mains cord business. And uh, there's actually room here on the panel, so I might um, stick a fuse holder in there just for fun. Okay, here's another little update. Um, so, as I mentioned before, there were two caps sitting down underneath here and they both connected to a valve pin which is directly underneath this coil. And so, 
the way to get down there is basically to I had to remove the cap that was here anyway to replace it but I had to take this cap back off again or move it out of the way so lift the bottom leg and move that cap out of the way then disconnect all the connectors to the top of this coil so that I could then just tip this coil up enough to get underneath um, and replace the two caps. Okay. Um, the one over here was particularly challenging because it was really difficult to see where one end of it actually connected to as it went up here. And so I had to remove these caps coming from the volume control so that I could find out exactly where it went. And in the end, I got it done and I put everything back. And so there we go. So what follows is an object lesson in why it's a bad idea to work really late at night on these little projects when you're feeling a little bit tired. Because the most difficult cap of all is this one. And guess what? I misread the old one I took out. And so this cap here is completely the wrong value. So now I have the joy of taking it all out again. So I can re-replace this little chap around the back here. How's that for fun? So, uh, yes. It's at times like this that you need uh, some moral support to get back into it. But it will be done and so then we'll be pretty much, I just have to um, redo these guys, which is be reasonably straightforward, he said, hopefully. And I think that should be it then, as far as uh, recapping is concerned. So, lesson learned. Uh, I guess the lesson is you should uh, check and check and check again. And in fairness, I did check but I measured and re looked at the old capacitor after I had put the other one in because I was certain it was a 500 puff cap. Turns out it's a 5000 puff cap. So uh, out by a factor of 10. Ho hum. So here we are with the halfway stage. Coil removed out of the way so you can get at this pin here. And uh, because that's where this replacement cap needs to go along with the other one. So. Put it back together and hope we haven't damaged anything. Okay, so now onto the volume control area. So uh, I actually took the volume control pot out completely for a couple of reasons. One, it's a lot easier to solder on the components while it's out and then just tag them when you put it back in. Two, it had been, I don't know, the whole, the shaft was down at a fairly noticeable angle and it had bent the front panel here so I wanted to take that out and straighten up the panel so that this pot sits pretty much horizontal like the other ones or it's close um, I decided I'm going to replace all this neutral wiring here because as usual it's the neutral end that's switched so I'll replace all this I've uh, taken out the uh, the old mains cable um, and uh, yeah somewhere I'll have to find space for a uh, a sort of 150 watt 10 watt 150 ohm 10 watt resistor somewhere in here going off to the heater chain um, to uh, replace the um, the resistive mains cord so um, yeah coming along, albeit slowly, but um, yeah, we'll get there. So I fitted one of the 50 uh, microfarad electrolytics in here. The other one goes sort of between the neutral line up here and the B plus down here. So I'm going to wait until I have all this done in here first to see is there any decent place where I can cite another one of these electrolytics um, and make it look halfway decent.